So I've got my MacBook Pro right here. Let's jump into Lightroom. So as you guys can see right here, I've got Lightroom open and just for transparency, I'm running version 4.2. It kind of disappeared quick. There we go, version 4.2. Um, so Lightroom is pretty similar across the board. I know that I get a lot of, com I've gotten a lot of comments on other Lightroom tutorials that this doesn't look the same or this does, this looks different than mine. Make sure that you're updated to the latest version because everything should look pretty much the same. But let's jump right into this. So basically, as you can see right here is all of your photos. This will show you everything. I actually have 10,519 photos in my Lightroom. Under there, you'll see the recently added photos. It'll label them by date. To import photos to the software, you just go up to add photos right here. Once you click on that, you'll be able to pull photos from anywhere on your Mac. And so basically right here, I've got a couple of photos. If I wanted to import these, I just select them. Actually, those are all Photoshop files. So as you guys can see here, I've actually selected a bunch of photos I wanna import into Lightroom, and I'm just gonna hit this review for import button. That'll open up this window where I can see all the photos here that I wanna import, and I then can hit add the photos. So we're gonna add 24 photos. Up here in the upper left-hand corner, you're gonna see your progress bar. This will show you how fast things are importing or exporting into Lightroom. So you'll see that pop up here in the upper left hand corner. Now, as you can see, all of the photos populated in the just now folder here and the recently added. And now I can actually start to edit these photos. Now, these photos I took with a drone and I took them in a mode called AEB mode. So they're not just single photos, they're actually going to be stacked photos. And I'm gonna actually show you guys how to do that real quick right here. Um, this is huge. If you're a professional photographer, you probably want to know how to do this anyway. And it's very quick as you're about to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a good shot here. Um, and right here, this looks good. So the way I captured this is there are five photos in the series. So these five photos right here, I'm going to select all of these since they're going to be the same image. And what I'm basically going to do from here is I'm just going to merge them. The way that I've always done this is I go up to help and I type in HDR and there it is, HDR photo merge. If you wanna navigate to that without going to help, you can just go up to photo, down to photo merge and HDR merge right there. I just go to help because I'm weird and I like to type stuff in and when I type it in, it just shows me right where it's at without having to navigate the menus, but that's just me. I'm gonna hit HDR merge it's gonna gather the data, create the preview. Now you can just, you don't have to wait for it to populate the preview. You actually can just hit merge and it'll just do it. But if you wanna know exactly what it's gonna look like, you can just wait for the preview to load. And we might as well wait because we're already at 68%. But on the right hand side here, you can see auto align. So it'll auto align it if it was a little bit off. Um, between the five different photos or the three different photos. By default, deghosting is always set to medium, so I just leave that alone. Uh, I, I don't really 100% know exactly what it's for, so if you do, definitely let us know in the comment section below. So now that we've got that all set and we've loaded our preview here, we're just gonna hit merge, and it'll create the HDR, as you can see in our progress bar up here. You can see how far it is in that process. Now there is no way to do a large amount of this at once, like with something like Aurora, you could do basically batch bracketing and bracket like a bunch of different photos at once. So with this, you can just do one at a time, but it looks really nice. So there's our now single raw photo stitched together with the HDR images that we captured with the AEB images rather. And so now that we've got our photo open, we can actually start to edit it. So to open the editing settings, the main editing settings, you're actually gonna go over to this little levels over here, over these little levels. Once you click on that, 
you will see all of the different editing options. So you can edit the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. Now for me, I always like to push the shadows all the way up to 100. And then what I do to counter that, because sometimes that can be a little bit too much, is I go down to the effects, which are down here. And you actually can see texture, clarity, dehaze, vignette. I like to use dehaze a lot. I set the dehaze to like whatever I see fit, usually around 20. And it just makes the colors and it just makes the overall image pop a lot more. I can now adjust the clarity, a little bit of the texture. It'll make those mountains in the back there really pop out. Up here, we have the color grading. So I'm not big into this tool, but that's there if you need to use it. Um, here, we're gonna adjust the temperature just slightly, adjust the saturation just a little bit, not much. I don't like to do too much of that. But yeah, right there is pretty much our photo. But to get into other details here that they have, they have the detail section, uh, so you can adjust the sharpening, the radius of that, uh, the masking, noise reduction, color noise reduction. Down here, we've got the geometry. Uh, this will basically allow you to take distortion out of your photo and also fix the photo to just make it look good. So you've got that there. Now, I don't really need to fix the distortion too much, so I'm just gonna do that just a little bit. And then to get rid of these white pieces here that came from the distortion fix, we just go to constrain crop and boom, gets rid of that and there's your photo, it's all done. So now once you've edited your photo, let's say you wanna apply this edit to multiple other photos. Well, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you're opened and on the photo just like so. And right over here, you're gonna see three dots. You're only gonna see those three dots if you're clicked onto the photo. If you're not in any specific photo, those three dots disappear. So just make sure that you're aware of that. So once you see those three dots, you click on them and then you can copy the edit settings. Edit settings copied. And now we can go to other photos that are similar and I'm not actually going to apply those edits, but let's say we wanted to apply it to this one, this one, this one, and this one. Just those four photos. We could go to edit, and then we can go to paste. And once we hit paste, it'll paste those edit settings to those four photos. But I don't wanna actually apply those, so I'm gonna undo that. But that is how you do that. Now let's talk about exporting because that is very big. So we're gonna go back to that photo that we just edited. We're gonna click on it and we're gonna export it. So by exporting it, you can go up to this little arrow with a box. But also I just wanted to say this before we do this. If you need to export multiple photos, you can select all of those photos and then you can go up to export and do it that way as well. So you can export multiple photos at once or you can export one photo at a time, whatever you need. But for the sake of this example, we're doing one photo. So we're gonna go up to the share here, the box with the arrow, and we're gonna click custom settings. Once you click on custom settings, it'll open it up and you'll be able to select the file type. So you can export as a JPEG, a TIF, a DNG, or original plus settings. I like to export as a JPEG Full size is what I usually do. And quality, I usually set that to 80 because that is the sweet spot to where the photo looks excellent, but it's also not too big for my clients to deal with. So we're gonna go with 80, and then we're gonna, just gonna hit export photo. Once you hit that, you can choose the folder of where you wanna save the photo. So in this sake, it's trying to save it to Lightroom saved photos. I usually go directly into the project I was working with and save the photo in that folder. Completely up to you. That's gonna be based on what you guys wanna do. So I'm not actually going to export this photo. That was just the example. I didn't jump into too much of the details here, but before we wrap up the video, I'll show you guys a couple of more. Uh, right here is the crop. 
so you can actually crop your photo using this feature. You can straighten the photo in the crop settings as well. Below that is the Band-Aid. This is the healing brush. So if there's anything in the photo that you don't want, you can basically get rid of it. So for example, if I zoom in on this photo, um, like really in, there's this school down the street here from my house. There's this little like batting cage thing here. If I wanna get rid of that, I can just draw over it. And basically I can clone any other part of that photo to that area. Now it looks extremely bad because we're really zoomed in, but if I zoom out, you know, it's, it's an aerial photo, so you really can't tell at this point that I got rid of that. But this would help if you're editing for like a real estate agent and you need to remove the for sale sign, for example. Another thing is the paintbrush tool, which will allow you to edit specific parts of the photo. So let's say I wanted to brighten up only the elementary school in this photo. I'm gonna paint directly over the school just like so. And then I can now edit. So if I raise the exposure, as you can see, just that part of the photo is raising its exposure. None of the other parts of the photo is doing that. So you can basically do fine adjustments to specific areas in your photo, which is awesome. Now there is more features, but I don't use these other two. I believe this is a, yeah, this is the linear gradient and this is the radial gradient. I don't use the gradient editing tools, so I would feel uncomfortable telling you guys about that. Um, so I'm just not gonna include that in this part of the tutorial. But I basically showed you guys everything. I gave you a rundown on how to edit your photo, export it, how to batch edit, how to stack HDR photos. I gave you guys basically like a full rundown of Lightroom and you should at this point be pretty comfortable with using Lightroom if you're following this video. That is all for this tutorial. I just wanted to bring that to you. Lightroom is an incredibly, incredibly amazing software. It has transformed my business and I wouldn't use anything else to be honest at this point. You just don't achieve a similar look with any other software. I've used everything from Aurora to all different types of softwares and this is my favorite one. But anyway guys, that is all for today's video. If you learned something and wanna see more tutorials, definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. That way you're updated when I create new videos. And also please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it'll rank higher in the algorithm. But until next time guys, I'll see you in the next video.